This video is about the group by and aggregation um, in SQL. And uh, it's a shorter video handles uh, null handling and counts. If you want to get the introduction, that's in part one of this video. So uh, we're going to use the Northwind database. And uh, again, if you haven't gotten the idea of a group by, go back and check out part one. Um, but we want to look at how nulls are handled in aggregation. So if we consider this query, um, notice what I'm doing here is I'm summing up the unit price and counting the number of products and then dividing and hoping that that is the uh, average or it's a correct average. Here I'm using the average function and then here I'm taking the difference between the two and notice that um, my manual average is not correct. So normally you'd expect these two things to agree, uh, but why do they disagree? Well, in this uh, product table, I have included and changed the price of one of the products to have a null value. So what's happening is that uh, when we look at all the, the calculations is, there's the sum of the unit prices, and the sum uh, excludes the null because it's an unknown value. Then, uh, so the sum is calculated over 78 records, but the count is counting up 79 records, and then the sum uh, divided by the incorrect number of records gives me that manual average, and then the correct average price is 28.4065. So, so the average function is correctly handling the uh, unit price null. So in general, um, all the non-null values are correctly handled by the different functions, min, max, sum, standard deviation, variance, average, etc. And they will, uh, the null values will be ignored. So in general, depend on the aggregate functions provided by the language rather than trying to write your own and uh, that way you can be assured that they will be handled properly. Now count needs a little more explanation. When you specify uh, select count uh, you have to specify also a field when you say this. So notice that when I count product ID versus count unit price I can come back with two different numbers and so the way count works is that it'll go record by record down through the column and for any value that it finds in the product ID field it will count it. So non-nulls uh, will be counted, null values will not be counted. Same thing if I use unit price. So here you see the difference between counting the primary key which is always non-null versus counting some other field which may have nulls in it. Now, of course, sometimes you want to know how many non-null unit prices there are, so that's in the language. But in general, what you'd like to do is count something that, um, if you're trying to count records or uh, entity instances, you'd like to count something that is non-null. So, um, well, what about this? So you see the syntax uh, using a count asterisk. Uh, very commonly it's a nice shorthand and uh, if you looked at my select clause video you'll you'll know that the asterisk is a shorthand it's kind of a wild card it means all fields or all columns so the way to interpret this is um, when you when count looks at the fields it looks at all fields for non null values so if it comes upon a record and there's anything across the whole record that's non-null, then that record will be counted. So this is kind of the trivial count. It's count anything that has anything in it, any record that has any value in the whole record. Um, so this works, and of course with any, if you have a record or a table that has a primary key in it, then obviously the primary key will be non-null, and it'll be counted. So, um, I find this a little confusing uh, when you write larger queries. So I think that the asterisk is a little unclear. So as an example, I'm selecting um, from products and categories, I'm joining the two tables together, and I'm using a count star. So I run that, 
and uh, it's a little unclear to me what is being counted. Am I counting products? Am I counting categories? So um, in order to state my intention more clearly to uh, another programmer or to myself in a month, uh, I like to count the primary key of the entity that I'm trying to count. So here I'm, my intention is to count products. So I'm going to say count the primary key of the products table. And this uh, more clearly states my intention. Uh, but you might say, well, why do we only have 77 records? Well, um, just to, to demonstrate, um, only 77 of the products satisfy the join, and there I have two of the products have a null category ID. So, uh, in summary, uh, be careful with null handling. If you're going to count, count something you know is not null, and in general that's the primary key of the entity that you're trying to count. And also, um, the primary key serves another purpose in terms of code clarity. Uh, to communicate what the intentions of the count are.